1964, Liverpool Football Club's first league championship of the modern era. It was the start of a quarter of a century of unsurpassed supremacy, as one Liverpool team after another strode majestically to one honour after another, rewriting the record books as the championship titles rolled in. In 1986, Kenny Dalglish, in his first season as player-manager, led the club to their first League and FA Cup double. But a year later, with Dalglish no longer playing, and Ian Rush sold to Juventus, there were those who thought the plentiful years were over. Little did they know that Rush's departure would be the prelude to perhaps the finest team Liverpool had ever garnered. Where once they chased Michael Laudrup, they now spent the £3.2 million from the Rush sale on Peter Beardsley, John Aldridge and, departing a little from the established Liverpool pattern, on John Barnes. The cop would take all three to their hearts, but on the eve of the 1987-88 season, that celebrated stronghold for Liverpool supporters looked like a building site. An old Victorian sewer had collapsed under the famous terrace and Liverpool had to postpone their first three home matches. But the question as to how they would go about trying to regain the championship from Everton was first answered in front of 54,000 people in the sunshine at Highbury, where the three new players combined for Liverpool's first season. Aldridge the scorer, as he would be so often. Arsenal were regarded as genuine championship contenders. And when Paul Davis equalised, you felt that some Liverpool teams of the past would have settled for a draw. But despite their new change strip, there was nothing grey about this Liverpool outfit. Steve Nichols' header gave them a flying start to what would be a magnificent season. In September, on Tyneside, the Geordie fans were hoping that Mirandinha from Brazil would replace the departed £1.9 million figure of Peter Beardsley now in the red shirt of Liverpool. Millions of BBC Match of the Day viewers relish the comparison, but between the teams, there was none at all. Here's Barnes. Beardsley. And there goes Barnes again. Danger here. Aldridge far post. John Anderson and Steve Nicholl. What a simple goal for Liverpool. And Steve Nicholl puts it away with some aplomb. Beardsley. Nicholl. Lawrenson has now found room in the Newcastle penalty area. This is Venison. And here's Barnes. And Aldridge this time, 2-0. 38 minutes gone. Liverpool make it look so easy. Onside, Beardsley. Nichols in the centre, completely unmarked as yet. There he is again. 3-0. Now, Mirandinia, he's away. And Gillespie's trying to get to him, and penalty. Gillespie on Mirandinia. Here's McDonald. Put away well. 3-1, and hope for Newcastle. And Aldridge, released on the far side. Beardsley in the middle. It's still Nickel, he's gone all the way. And that is the hat-trick. What a tremendous personal performance by the Liverpool number four, the Scottish international. So who would stop Liverpool? Well, Queen's Park Rangers were the early first division pacemakers, but when they came to Anfield in October, Liverpool knew that victory would put them on top. Aldridge pulling away at the far post. He got away from McDonald for a split second. Found Barnes. Barnes cross. Oh, great Johnston! Barnes with the kick. And ball was it appears in there. A penalty's been given. And Aldridge has a chance to maintain this remarkable sequence of his. And he drives it into the top corner, even though Seaman went the right way. Beardsley. And now Johnston. Burn wanting a long time to clear that, he dwelt on it too long. Barnes. And Barnes again. Three. Barnes the scorer after a very good one-two with John Aldridge. Well, the 
not saying easy. It may be now, it wasn't for a long time. Oh, Barnes won it. He won it from Brock. He's got Beardsley going to his left, but still Barnes. That's a fabulous individual goal. Barnes had not only been accepted at Liverpool, he was well on the way to becoming idolised. Here was a suitable platform for his wide and wonderful range of skills. Here too, an appropriate audience to give due appreciation to an original artist. One spectator in particular must have realised how wisely Liverpool had reinvested that £3.2 million especially when they could field substitutes with the reputation of Paul Walsh and Mark Lawrenson. Within 24 hours of that victory, they'd added Ray Houghton to their role of internationals. By November, there was no room to spare whenever or wherever Liverpool were playing. Certainly not at Anfield on Derby Day for a contest of champions. Everton, their appetite sharpened by a Little Woods Cup here four days earlier, were in no mood to lose their grip on the championship without competing in the keenest sense. Kevin against Reid. Ah, well, that's a nice reaction afterwards. The blue is in the red half. Wilson is being pulled by Nickel. Saved well. That's great from Barnes to McMahon. the greatest delight among the participants on the bench or in the crowd it was a great ball by Barnes and a lovely run by Steve McMahon got past three players the pass made the gap and found the finish South Hall to him with a little bit of a nick from behind but he really placed it well did McMahon By January, Liverpool had extended their lead to 13 points and Arsenal knew their hopes of catching them had almost disappeared when they came to Anfield. This match attracted a record worldwide television audience for a league game and with Michel Platini in the stand, Liverpool produced two goals for anybody's video library. Winterburn. Adams was up, Gillespie's header out, Richardson shot back and Hooper stretching, got a right hand to it as Smith might have blocked his vision. looking for Nickel. Barnes took on Caesar. Still Barnes, brilliant. Houghton couldn't convert. McMahon, three in the way. Tony Adams only got a foot to it. Well, McMahon won that back wonderfully well. Beardsley. Oh, a goal for Aldridge. Right on half time, it's John Aldridge. McMahon's contribution there, absolutely fantastic. No wonder they're shaking his hand. 
he won it back on the touchline, motored away, three facing him, into Beardsley, Lukic narrowing the angle at the near post, got a hand to it, but look at Aldridge, that's the poacher's position. Aldridge. Beardsley. What can you say apart from pure genius? Beardsley took them all on, went round Michael Thomas, tricked the keeper, and made it 2 0 to Liverpool after 61 minutes. Now it was a question of whether Liverpool could match or better Leeds United's record of 29 games without defeat from the start of a first division season, set 14 years earlier. With Liverpool one match short, their record in terms of games won and goals scored already looked superior to Leeds. In March, Liverpool went to play Derby County at the baseball ground one Wednesday evening, knowing that a win or a draw would enable them to equal the record. Barnes from Beardsley, and still Barnes, how did he get that across, Johnston, and, oh, off the line, Johnston, goal, Craig Johnston put it away, after the first shot from Steve Nicholl had been scrambled off the line. A one-all draw meant Liverpool now stood alongside Leeds, and a quirk of the fixture list decreed they should play their 30th match on the ground of neighbours Everton at Goodison Park where Liverpool had won in the FA Cup four weeks earlier. But this time, Wayne Clark stabbed in what proved to be the only goal of the game. Clark's older brother, Alan, had played in the Leeds side that set that record in 1974. Now, he had ensured it would not be beaten. But Liverpool and their supporters didn't let that defeat, nor their second setback at Nottingham Forest over Easter, detract from their desire to win the double for the second time in three seasons. Brian Clough's team were their opponents again in the FA Cup semi-final at Hillsborough. A battle of wits between a man who always spoke his mind and a man who usually said very little. Kenny Dalgleish let his team do the talking and at this stage of the season they were very eloquent indeed. It's Gillespie's header, Beardsley, McMahon. Good play by Liverpool, Barnes is on the left wing, running past Chettle now. Well found by McMahon, Aldridge is in the centre, still Barnes, penalty! Penalty to Liverpool, Chettle was beaten by Barnes' run and as he came in behind him, Barnes went down and Liverpool have a penalty kick. Barnes broke clear from a lovely pass by McMahon, Chettle comes in behind him, does he catch him there? It would seem that he did and George Courtney pointing to the spot and it's down now to John Aldridge who scores Liverpool take the lead in the 13th minute well, Liverpool calling on all their hardened experience as far as start the second half in the ascendancy but this is what happened before Barnes Aldridge is there Aldridge and exactly the same again defence and snatch a vital goal and again Barnes involved and what a volley from Aldridge Steve Sutton beaten by a decisive finish and Barnes combines with Beardsley quality there between the two England players and look at this for the volley one of the best goals you'll see this season Aldridge's goals and Liverpool's devastating form had made light of the absence of Rush. Everybody was talking about the new Liverpool and starting to compare them to the teams built by Dalglish's predecessors. Their three matches in 12 days against Forest had caught the imagination. So far, Brian Clough had won one and Kenny Dalglish had won one. The forceful figure at Forest was all square with the laconic leader at Anfield. There, Liverpool were to stage the third meeting a rearranged league game played just four days after the semi-final. 
What a momentous night it turned out to be. Some people called it the... So the final part of the... And having seen the first, I can only hope this one lives up to what we've seen already. Forrest in white, in the cup end in the first half, his chip. Not a lucky ground this day for Forrest, though. and so did Wilson and Beardsley now Glover fresh pair of legs in the Forest lineup tonight and indeed he is the youngest player on the pitch the only newcomer in a sense to the uh, action between these two teams it's Clough the others should know each other pretty well by now and Stuart Pearce latching on to a throw from Grubb just got a feeling that Pearce got uh, to prove because with Kenny Sun international there goes Controlled by Nigel Clough. Ball finding Glover. And Clough in space here. Trying to find Webb. Back again with Clough. His technique really is a joy to watch. In for Wilson. <laughs> Foul by Glover on McMahon. This is Gillespie. Foster. Chettle. Just wonder whether Forrest might have taken a slight gamble on Des Walker's fitness tonight. Doesn't look to be moving with quite the normal freedom. This is McMahon. Indeed, he's signalling to the bench already. I don't think this is going to pay off for Forrest. I know that Walker had a pain-killing injection before the semi-final even on Saturday and they've worked on him again tonight to try and get him fit. It doesn't look to me as though they've succeeded. Aldridge, Beardsley, 
Away from Webb, Rice was in the way. Pierce has made a forward run from left back. Here's Webb. Wilson, they're trying to stay on side. to his left. attention Liam O'Kane on the pitch it was a bruised ankle the original injury Kenny Dalgleish had a match last night he played in the testimonial for John Charles and Bobby Collins is going to soldier on for the time being. This is Gillespie. Here's Rice. He finds Pierce. Gary Gillespie. Beards is making a run through the inside right position. There he is. Aldridge further ahead of him. And it was Webb that got back. central figure in the drama so far between the two teams as indeed is John Barnes here and that's let's make the protest walkers fitness play it's Ray Houghton back to Peter Beardsley oh look at that tricked his way there out of a very 
tight corner. Look at the little drag back which fooled the Forest defender, Pierce, and then the run on and the shot. started the match 14 points behind Liverpool so only victory here but it's Barnes for Liverpool only victory here would keep Forrest realistically in the race and even that's a slim hope his throw he gets good length on those here's Clough Crosby again Barnes now Aldridge off through the centre Houghton moving to the right hand side Beardsley to the left in support McMahon still McMahon oh well played Steve Nicholl look at this that possible and Nicol found the room just at the right time and brought a reflex save out of Steve Sutton Aldrich and Houghton are in the six yard box and Gillespie is by the penalty spot it's a difficult one Neil Webb got it away Barnes again. Come again, what? Barnes again. Come on, Dagger. Oh, Peter. Come on, so appealing about these matches between Liverpool and Forest this last 12 days has been that both teams have tried to play constructive football along the ground and made it a good spectacle for the spectators there haven't been too many bad fouls and that was just a rough and tumble on Nigel Clough by Alan Hansen but nothing malicious So, 15 minutes gone, and the score nil-nil. for Forrest. Here's Wilson. Webb. Straight between Foster and Walker and Beers 
passes away. Although in the end, the two of them got to him. Chettle forward, good ball. Glover, Wilson well advanced in the middle. Clough coming up behind him. Gillespie intercepted and Hansen cleared. Now McMahon. Pierce. Rice. Webb. Oh, nicely done. Neil Webb attempting the one two. Aldridge and Beardsley now. Here's Gary Crosby. That was Chettle. take the lead. Ray Houghton. And I have to say again, John Barnes played a part in the move. And the goals Liverpool scored this season, he seems to figure more often than not. Foster. Chettle. Was it back from Shettle? And Gary Ablett concedes the corner. So Barnes will now have some defending to do. Crosby will take it. Foster has come forward. Shettle's in there too. Beardsley had also come back to help, and here's Barnes from a nice touch by Aldridge. Oh, look at that. Spackman now. Liverpool breaking out menacingly. Beardsley's a Spackman's left. Just funneling back. Walker trying to stop Beardsley with Crosby's help. And Pierce as well, but that was Ablett. Barnes. Aldridge waiting. So is Nickel here. found out on Saturday that Liverpool are often at their most dangerous when the ball is at the other end of the field. That was proved when Liverpool scored their winning goal at Hillsborough and it was the case again just then. Houghton's goal, the one by which they lead.
against Liverpool, especially in your own half. And Nigel Clough looking for Gary Crosby. Nickel. There goes Hamp. Outside of him is Beardsley. Nigel Spatman's free. Gillespie's moving forward now. Ablett. trying to do a Barnes at the other end but uh, look where Barnes was then having just been up threatening the other goal he was back retreating and retrieving in his own half Nickel, Beardsley, Houghton Spackman and McMahon tries to get behind Chettle Terry Wilson against Walker. And he was boxed in, was Aldridge. It's, it's Wilson now. And it's back with Aldridge again. Now Spackman. And this is Barnes. Took it first time with the outside of his left foot. Such a wide range of skills that he possesses. Some players wouldn't have got a shot in here. But he did. Houghton. That's for Nickel. Beardsley. to Chettle, Forrest looking for positions further forward, Crosby, Webb, Clough, oh, it might run on for Glover here, Hansen steps across, corner, that one or two crosses worried Liverpool on Saturday. And up goes Foster. And that's Webb. Oof. And just a, a pause because Gary Crosby seems to require attention. Just think if you look back there, you'll see that Peter Beardsley was the defender who averted the danger following that corner. And the more you see Liverpool, the more you see their attacking qualities, you continually find that those same gifted attackers are being asked to do a job back in defence. And it's possibly their overall work rate that has something 
to say about why Liverpool are the team that they are. There are no stars here. Wilson's in there. Half cleared by Nickel. Here comes Webb. And it's Wilson again from Clough's header. Still Wilson. Good tackle by Spatman. And now Beardsley. forward, Beardsley's touch, McMahon to threaten Very good. I think uh, Nigel Clough has one quality that Peter Beardsley also has Doesn't and uh, Robillard certainly was extended there by the young centre forward Still covering the through ball to Aldridge. 
Shettle. Webb and Clough was the player on the left. Well seen by Webb. Just a bit too much to do with the bounce of the ball, but some of the passing from both teams tonight is of the highest order. It was Webb who appreciated where Clough was, even though he was, what, 40 or 50 yards away. Good understanding. Continues his run. Spatman. Barnes. Clough again. Never stops working, looking for positions. But Barnes too is about to tight now. This is Spackman. McMahon. Oh. McMahon's having an absolutely marvellous night. Indeed, he's played so well recently, it's only underlining the form that he's been showing for many, many months. Full of appetite and indeed full of incentive with the European Championship looming up. Ten minutes left in the first half at Anfield. Liverpool lead Nottingham Forest by one goal to nil. Des Walker is not at full throttle, but he is not doing well to carry on in a defence which itself is under a considerable amount of scrutiny as Liverpool pile players forward from all angles. Hooked in by Beardsley. Aldridge is there. Knocking out to the right wing. Beardsley. Oh, he seems to be able to find space and find Aldridge. And that is another superb Liverpool goal. Peter Beardsley made it. John Aldridge scored it. And as with everything Liverpool do, it looks simple. But it was of a quite stupendous quality. 
Beardsley in his own half here. Pitched the ball what? 30 yards into the path of Aldridge, who just jogs it past the keeper to make it 2-0. 37 minutes, and John Aldridge scores his 26th of the season. Beardsley with one of the best passes that you will see anywhere, anytime. this Liverpool season and there's so many goals to enjoy again but there was one that didn't quite finish in the back of the net but what led up to it individual skill that nowhere in the world surely would you see better Beardsley at his best Barnes can curl it maybe from here Short, Beardsley's flick, Houghton! Oh. There are so many alternatives. Barnes goes for the low one to Beardsley, the little flick it, and Houghton close and McMahon foiled by Pierce. Gillespie makes a run across. And here's McMahon. Just relieved to stem the tide. Devastating, this Liverpool football. No wonder the cop is singing. Down the 25 years of success they've had here, I don't think there's been a better team, surely. Certainly not one with so much variety and invention. First half, Liverpool 2, Forest 0. No doubt who the masters are tonight. Houghton, McMahon, Nicola on the right. They're coming from everywhere. Could you believe the dummy by McMahon? 
instinct. And Aldridge just unable to finish it off. Ground full of appreciation. Barnes. Nottingham Forest are doing their best, but what can they do against this tidal wave? Nickel forward, Aldridge, Houghton. If they got their finishing right, Liverpool might have been six up. Well, even the bench surely can enjoy the quality of the play here, as well as checking the watch and making sure that Liverpool stick at it. at last have an opportunity to set things up in the Liverpool half. Chapel. Clough. Webb and Foster are both forward. And bear in mind, Forrest did come from two goals behind on Saturday to get one back, so... Uh, Regardless, this is a lost cause. first half and Forrest will be pleased to hear the whistle I would imagine at least they're looking at them in their dressing room Hansen Save from Nigel Clough, lest we forget. Something close to a 45 minute football fantasy. Ray Houghton was at the heart of it. John Aldridge was often on the end of it. And Peter Beardsley was just unbelievable. Liverpool applauded off. But even having seen many other performances this season, that in itself was something above and beyond, well appreciated by a crowd who see them go off the field 2-0 up, but it could have been many more. <laughs> 19-year-old Darren Russell comes on at half-time in place of Des Walker, who had a recurrence of his ankle injury early in the first half and soldiered on until half-time under quite a handicap. There was a quote from the Real Madrid coach Leo Beenhacker at the weekend when Hugo Sanchez scored an amazing goal in Spain. And Beenhacker said they should have uh, blown the whistle, finished the match, taken the teams off and cracked the champagne because it was that good, nobody could follow it. Well, if Audrey goes on scoring goals like 
the one tonight and the one last Saturday, they'll think about doing that at Liverpool. It has been champagne stuff virtually all through the season. However, Nottingham Forest will do their best to make a match of this. Here's Wilson. Spackman There's Russell Spackman and That's a good one He was caught by Chettle there It's going to be a free kick in very dangerous John Barnes territory because he tends to whip them in a bit from there. Gillespie comes forward. Foster gets it out. Barnes free on the left wing from Ablett's pass. Gillespie still forward. Barnes and Chettle. Still Barnes. Wilson sticking to the task. Clough to Webb. Nickel. Looks for Aldridge. Offside. Rice's header, Glover, and Rice again, Crosby's coming in from the far side, Cliff's at the near post, Alan Hansen's clearance, corner. Foster is forward, and there he is in fact, back again with Rice, corner again and here comes Wilson Aldrich oh, the best appearances this is Rice Pierce and Glover Glover, 17 years old still, one of the promising Forest youngsters and uh, while we're talking about that, they're rebuilding, or rather I should say building for the future with uh, the likes of Nigel Jemson and Gary Parker having been signed and yet to come into the side. Here's Webb. Forest will see this season as part of the learning process for their young team but it could reasonably be expected to end with perhaps second place in the first division could be a battle between them and Manchester United but for his team the championship beckons Spackman Webb Crosby to Clough he want the return, Gary Crosby. He's got Glover inside him, so Webb as well. And a little bit more experience. This lad will prove himself quite a handful, as he has on occasions already. This is Glover. Webb, Wilson. Yes. 
What a spirited start here by Forrest of the half. This is Clough. And it was Houghton that got back to make range. A goal kick's been given, which seems to surprise Nigel Clough. I have to say, from my rather uh, long-range position, it surprised me a bit. Neil Webb put a lovely ball through. Nigel Clough was onside. Perhaps he felt he was fouled. have said something like don't stand back and admire Liverpool get at them a bit because that appears to be the pattern now here's Nigel Clough Barnes back into Barnes Now, this is Webb, Wilson. And Neil Webb slipped, and that gave McMahon possession. On to Spackman, and now Houghton. Spackman again. Barnes takes over. It's a lovely ball, McMahon, out, was it? Oh, and apparently not. The linesman's in a far better position than me. This is Glover, fouled by Gillespie. And then by Spackman, actually, after the decision had been given. this year when he joined the attack there here on Easter Monday they were 3-1 up against Manchester United playing it seemed terribly well and then finished up sharing the points in a 3-3 draw so just wonder whether Forrest might be able to carve something out for themselves here to being on the receiving end for so much of the first half we've been playing 10 minutes in the second
Rice. Webb. And now Barnes. Just sit back and enjoy this. Aldrich. McMahon. Terry Wilson's made a forward run and so too is Glover. to Liverpool. Nickel. And Houghton. Aldridge is in there. So is Beardsley here. Still Beardsley. Good save by Sutton. Beardsley denied after more trickery in the penalty box. Spinning virtually on a sixpence there. Barnes working it to Houghton. Aldridge, Gillespie! Decisive finish. And the move so fast from the corner that all Steve Sutton had done earlier was wiped out in another bewildering piece of Liverpool football. No wonder the goalkeeper shakes his head. How do you cater for this? Worked in from the left. And after 58 minutes, Gary Gillespie makes it 3-0. Well, Gillespie's second goal in consecutive uh, home games. He scored against Manchester United. Now here's McMahon. again instrumental in that move and isn't that again a Liverpool trademark the opposition perhaps just slightly relaxed with a sigh of relief after the goalkeeper had done so well to prevent Beardsley scoring in the first place within a matter of seconds the ball is in the back of the net anyway Year. You have to go back an awful long way to the uh, end of the 60s, no less, to find a Nottingham Forest victory in the league at Anfield. Side against John Aldridge. side certainly everything he's done has been neat and purposeful
played short to Barnes. Here comes Nickel. And this is Glover. But Forrest can't keep possession for long enough to get players out of their own hands. Clough. They might now. Webb, Glover. Offside is given by the linesman on the far side, Dave Orrell of Wigan. Just one goal now equal the best of the season. They've had several fours, but uh, never more. Here's Wilson. Pierce. Oh, well played. Stuart Pierce again. Crosby coming in from the far side. Glover tries to get there. And Gillespie clears. And just look who kept the ball in there. Peter Beardsley on the far side, even though Adlett couldn't. Glover. Oh, what a good effort that was by Neil Webb. He struck that ever so well. Out of very little, really. Hansen. Attempt to thwart Aldridge ended in a corner. <laughs> Only Aldridge actually is in the penalty area for Liverpool at the moment. Flags up. Don't think the linesman's happy about the position from which that corner was taken, is he? I think uh, Dennis Hutchinson with the yellow flag is saying that maybe the ball was. Not in the quadrant there. Well, he's found a way of stopping Liverpool anyway, hasn't he? Barnes to take the corner. Beardsley by the penalty spot. Same again. Well, now Han has gone in there to join Aldridge in the six yard box. delivery by Barnes if the quality of the corner kick is that good defenders are fully stretched goal kick this time in their last 11 league games but finding themselves 3-0 down here foul by McMahon on Clough although actually McMahon seems to have got the worst of it holding his left knee Steve McMahon could be forgiven for getting a little anxious when he gets an injury because two years ago when Liverpool won the double he was hurt in the FA Cup semi-final and missed out on the run into the championship and indeed at uh, Wembley where he was only the substitute against Everton unused he very much wants to be part of it this year 
Kenny Dalglish's subs tonight are Craig Johnston and Jan Mulby. Indeed, the Danish manager is here, hoping to get a glimpse of Mulby for the European Championships, but McMahon won't come off easily. Chettle. Ablett. Webb. finds Aldrich. Spatman. Offside, surely. Aldridge was going for a finished time by his standards a week or two ago, but um, he scored, what is it now, four goals in these three matches against Forrest, two of them penalties. Glover. Wilson came through. I think the sportsmanship in the three matches between these two teams deserves a mention. There's hardly been a bad foul because both Liverpool and Forest have concentrated first and foremost on playing football. Hansen there. Beardsley. Oh, look at this. Alan Hansen, the captain from the back, and he was so unselfish. He couldn't quite find Aldridge. Free kick against Hatton, but Hansen, I wonder if a, a forward in that position would have been tempted to go for goal anyway. Alan Hansen was so aware of Aldridge's position, he decided to lay the ball off. But he played a lovely move with Beardsley first off, and then as Sutton narrowed the angle, he tried to square it. Halfway through the second half, Liverpool three, Forest nil. That was Gillespie's through ball, but Mard made the run ahead of Foster who got a foot in at the last moment to repel yet another Liverpool thrust from the middle of the field. And it's won back by Beardsley for Houghton. Close touch, and again. Ablett and Hansen trying to get the ball clear, and finally it was Barnes. to uh, fill the visitors' area tonight, so the crowd is not quite capacity. A healthy figure at 39 and a half. could be forgiven now for doing their sums and working out exactly when the championship will be achieved and if uh, this goes Liverpool's way as it looks like doing one point at Norwich next Wednesday would virtually seal it but I suspect the major celebrations would be left for the home game against Tottenham here on Saturday week
back to Nigel Clough, who has been on the receiving end once or twice. It doesn't seem to complain very much. Here's Chettle. Nigel Spatton played that ball back and you just begin to think about the competition for places here because Ronnie Whelan's going to be fit in a couple of weeks he feels and Nigel Spatman's got to just kick It's a very good pass again from him, but uh, Grubber would never have had a chance of uh, beating Grobbelar. Webb uh, certainly coming more into the game. Ablett. Aldridge. Crosby and Barnes. They had quite a contest on Saturday when Barnes kept getting back in front to defend against Crosby on this occasion it was a foul on the forest winger but he's quickly uh, back in the action finding Chettle Webb was outfoxed there by Aldridge Pierce on Beardsley free kick just outside It's going to be classed as obstruction by Roger Milford, which means it's indirect. I think he would have uh, expected to perhaps get his shot on the goal from there. Nice uh, little layoff. over a quarter of an hour left Liverpool 3-0 up this is McMahon Houghton Rice England versus uh, Scotland for a moment there with uh, Nicola and Pearce
on Aldridge. Houghton taking over. And Forrest with a chance to break through Webb. Picking it up from Crosby, finding uh, Pierce here, and out wide is Rice, Wilson, ah, that's where Liverpool often get the interception. Pierce is off. Testing Foster. is so crisp and clean between these two teams because passing is the name of the game for both of them Ray Houghton finding Nigel Spackman Barnes against Chettle <laughs> oh, look at Barnes here they're waiting for the pullback Beardsley oh, a glorious goal again Conspire to produce another marvellous moment. Barnes through the legs of Chettle, past Crosby, pulls it back, and Beardsley drives it unerringly to the corner to make it 4-0 on 79 minutes and get the goal that his performance so much deserves. And the substitution by Liverpool, Steve McMahon, who did take a knock, comes off and makes way for the last 10 minutes or so for Jan Moby, who's being watched by his national team manager, Sepp Piontek. He's come over to see whether Moby is in the right state of fitness and frame of mind to be part of the European Championship squad. Come to talk to him as well as to watch him, because that will only be for a few minutes. has had some nights and he's capped it now with a goal Moby. the cop is saying we want five because despite the fact this has been an all conquering season by Liverpool they haven't scored more than four in one match so as the fans and wave to Bruce Grobelaar they'd like to see Liverpool run up their best total of the season here's Nickel Houghton Nickel again on that fourth goal that Steve Chettle is sick of the sight of John Barnes uh, he gave away a penalty trying to stop him on uh, Saturday and there Barnes pushed the ball through his legs and that's what everybody likes to see isn't it the ball cut back from the goal line for the oncoming forward to get his shot in and what a good one it was too by the Italy here's Spackman Barnes Spackman goes again it was a good chance another 
a scintillating move. Nigel Spackman thrusting forward, playing the one-two with Barnes. And look again how the player hanging off there had found space for himself. Clough. towards their 17th championship. And these loyalists here have got their views on Liverpool teams of the past. To all personal opinion, as Kenny Dalglish is quick to tell us. But I haven't seen a better Liverpool side than this in the last 25 years. Here's Hansen. Barnes. Piling forward again in the middle. It's going to come off Pierce's head. Webb. The big level was in his own half, so he must be onside. Steve Nickel got back. Eccentric moment from Grobola, but uh, no one's complaining about that. They might have Forrest scored. This is Webb, and here's Clough. And Nicola has made two timely challenges back there in the last couple of minutes to deny Forrest a possible consolation goal, which is all it would be, surely. thinking if they're watching this they've got quite a good record against Liverpool actually so uh, no one must take the cup final for granted far from it question perhaps to whether they can stop Liverpool from playing their way we shall see that's all in the future here's Chettle Russell Barnes to Mulby possession Nickel Howden there's always a red shirt to spare isn't there Ablett there's the kick again to Ablett it's too long with just a bit more care if one dare make that sort of comment when they played so wonderfully well Liverpool could have run up a very high score here. And we're going to see a second change. Ray Houghton is coming off. To give a run to the second Liverpool substitute, number 12, Craig Johnston. Kenny Dalglish giving all 13 a run tonight. Massive foul by Gillespie. Clough takes it quickly into Webb. Just under five minutes to go at Anfield. Liverpool leading Forrest by four goals to nil. But here comes Crosby for Forrest. Got that away from Clough. Corner. A smile from Grobola. A pat on the back for Nickel. Foster and Chettle are both in there. That was Chettle, that was Foster, but Nichols there again. He's made now four clearances in the last five minutes. New ball is called for. Now can Forrest just register one last effort? Chettle and Pierce. 
a shot. to web. Liverpool unbeaten at Anfield in the league now for over a year. Wimbledon, their cup final opponents, were the last team to win here in Division 1. And beaten only twice, of course, in Barclays League matches this season anyway. Aldridge chasing here, came off Foster. Chettle. Well played Spackman. And Beardsley. And Spackman. And Aldridge. It's five. Aldridge is counting up the goals against Forrest. Here we go again. Beardsley, Spackman, Aldridge. And nothing Wassel or Pierce could do about it minutes from the end, John Aldridge gets his second of the night Martin Spatton very influential in the move and unselfish and Aldridge now has scored five in three games in this Nottingham Forest Liverpool saga Webb, it's also Liverpool's best win of the season One better yet, Beardsley, Johnston, Aldridge forces on a hat-trick, his total for the season is 27, and uh, who said they couldn't replace Ian Rush? of celebration and richly merited Clough performance without a doubt is offside against Nigel Clough long ball by Jan Melby wasn't that well delivered except that uh, Wiseman on this side was fucked in for offside we are adding on time for stoppages now the Liverpool anthem booms out again. But it surely hasn't saluted a more complete side than this. Crosby. Bow. John Barnes on the edge of the area on Gary Crosby in injury time. moves away as the wall forms Clough and Pierce behind the ball this is Pierce but Bonilla's clean sheet looks like being protected
scores two of the five goals. Peter Beardsley excels again. And although Liverpool are not mathematically certain of the championship, that will surely come next week. They proved tonight they have no peers in the modern first division. The whole country was enthralled by that exhibition. It left many good judges speechless. Others search for the right words. Well, it's hard to describe, actually, because I think that's one of the finest exhibitions of, of football I've ever seen in my life. It was absolutely tremendous. I mean, well-deserved, and, uh, you know, the skills and the speed the game was playing at was absolutely tremendous. And I came away thinking, well, I've been really entertained, and I'm sure that the whole of the spectators here saw an exhibition tonight that they'll never be better at all. The championship now was a formality. It was settled against Tottenham at Anfield. ITV's cameras capturing an impudent goal by Big said much about his contribution to Liverpool's season. It confirmed Liverpool's 17th championship, their ninth in 13 seasons. They lost only two matches in their entire first division programme. That too equaled a modern record, set by Leeds in 1969. Liverpool themselves cared little about the statistics or the comparisons. They had brought their supporters more success, and with it, a harvest of entertainment and fun. Even the manager got excited at times, as his team produced a quality of football that previous Liverpool sides would have found hard to match. Even the 1979 team, in which Dalglish played. The 1988 vintage packed stadiums week in, week out, and furthered the close rapport between the mighty Reds and their followers. As Alan Hansen lifted the trophy, one question remained unanswered. Could Liverpool complete a unique second double? Opponents in the FA Cup final could be said to come from the other side of the tracks. And not for the first time, Wembley did the favourites no favours. Yes, he was caught. Russell's gone. The referee will have to pull it back. He's already given the foul by Andy Thorne. Beardsley distressed. Sanchez caught Young and Fashionu in there. And Sanchez was in there, and that's a goal for Wimbledon. Laurie Sanchez. There is Aldridge, Beardsley. Well, he might score here. Hamilton. Good here on Aldridge. Wimbledon protest. A decision. Good here thinks he played the ball. And here we have high drama because Aldridge, who I think might have been replaced a moment later, is the penalty taker. And never has a penalty been missed in the FA Cup final at Wembley. Best thinks that, or thought the kick might go to his left or the right as we look if Aldridge decides to go the same way as in the semi-final. He did! And he saved it! And made history! First time ever that a penalty kick has not been converted in the FA Cup final here. And Besson did guess right. His homework paid off. Second best on the day, but second to nobody over the season. Liverpool's 1988 championship team had a gloss which will never wear off in the minds and memories of those who witnessed their glittering football. The names will be rooted in Anfield folklore. Grobelar, goalkeeper of courage and character. Barry Venison, valuable early on at fullback. Steve Nichols, shining in his consistency. Gary Gillespie, patient for so long, but now a fortress, with Aston, who won his seventh championship medal. A medal, too, for Mark Lawrenson, though injury closed his career. Gary Ablett showed Liverpool can produce their own. Nigel Spackman, unnoticed, unfussy. Craig Johnston, energetic, enthusiastic. Steve McMahon, perpetual motion, personified. Ronnie Whelan, excellent before his injury. Ray Houghton, his passing added a new dimension. John Aldridge, in a rush to score goals. Peter Beardsley, the little perfectionist. And everybody's footballer of the year, the explosive, exceptional John Barnes. Perhaps it wasn't just their nationality that Kenny Dalglish had in common with that great Liverpool manager of the past. Bill Shankly, who started the championship parade in 1964, once said, this is our bread and butter, 
Cups are all very well, but the league championship remains Liverpool's number one priority. Having won the title 17 times, surely they'll be crowned the team of the century.